Hi, welcome to Microsoft Office Outlook. My name is Sandra Batakis, and I'm here to take you through part one of how to use Outlook as a fantastic tool on your desktop. Now, I've had the pleasure of not only working through email systems, but to actually say that I've been using Outlook before it was even called Outlook. I remember using little mail programs out of Microsoft, Microsoft Mail being one of them. We had the Microsoft Post Office in the back end. So as a, both an end user and an administrator, I've had a chance to see this program develop over the last 20 years. So I can say that, of course, not only do I teach this, but it's probably my tool of choice where I spend most of my day, day in and day out, to control everything from email to schedules to where to find my phone numbers. In this lesson, we'll have a chance to get started with Outlook 2013. What this means is in order to get started, we should become a little comfortable with the environment. So we'll do a whirlwind tour to get you to navigate the Outlook interface and understand what options are available to you. We'll then do some very basic email functions to get you started and show you where to find the help menus. In this topic, we're going to navigate the Outlook interface. What this means is we'll learn what an email address is all about. We'll look at the components of the Outlook interface. We'll look at the ribbon, the backstage view, the backstage view if you happen to be on an email. We'll also get a chance to look at what's called a workspace. A workspace is when you choose mail or contacts or calendar, in example. And when you click on it, the whole workspace will change to accommodate that piece. So we'll focus on the mail workspace here reading messages, looking for read and unread messages, calendar workspaces, then the people workspace, and last but not least, a couple of the Outlook tools that are available to you. Because we're learning about an email-based program, one of the most important things, of course, is to understand the components of an email address. So here, in an email address, we have what's called a local part and a domain part. The local part is what makes that user unique within their organization. And then, of course, the domain part is the organization that they're part of. Now, in the real world, you will not see dot .example. We'll use that here and there throughout the class, just so that we're not using real company names and naming a company that we may not even know about. Now, what's important to understand about an email address is your name is separated from the domain part with an at symbol. The other piece is that there are no spaces whatsoever in any email address. So let's talk a little bit about the domain part. With the domain part, this could be the name of your domain. So let's say here in training, we use Sandra Classroom. And actually, I just want to rewrite that because the way I've written it, it looks like there's a space, and I don't want you to get that confused with the fact that there are no spaces. So here's at sandraclassroom.com, no spaces. Notice I've used two capital letters. It is not case sensitive, but I know that I personally tend to type with cases just because it makes it easier to read. At sandraclassroom.com, as the email administrator, I can create as many accounts as I want. There could be Sandra, there could be Scott, there could be Bill, there could be Bob, there could be Mike, Billy, Bertha. It doesn't matter. I could call them user 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's naming these users any way that makes sense for your organization. There are some other domains out there. like hotmail.com or gmail.com. Those domains are public for anyone to get an email address. So what I will say is that Sandra Classroom, as the email administrator, maybe we have 25 email addresses, so the sky is the limit. But when you start using the Hotmail, the Gmail, the Verizon, the Comcast, the Xfinity, all of those are public and there are literally millions of email addresses. So you might look that your name is Dietrich Brown, and Dietrich.Brown is probably taken, so you might need to get a little more creative when you're creating your email address. Here we're looking at the components of the Outlook interface. So Outlook, at first glance, can be almost overwhelming. There's so much stuff on the screen. But once you learn what it all means, it's actually pretty easy to navigate. So we have our quick access toolbar. We can put shortcuts up there to use anytime we want. 
We have a title bar that tells us who we're logged on as. Very important if you jump between email accounts. We have the ribbon. Those are all the tools that you'll be using. And they do change in context every time you change context from mail to calendar to contacts. I'm going to erase uh, on the screen a few times here just because there's enough going on. Um, we have something called the in instant search box. So if you're looking for something, you can go ahead in there and type it. In fact, I just hung up the phone and I said to someone, go to my email, click in the search box and look for it. I already told them that and forward them the email. So we use this all the time. You can sort and notice here we talk about the sort bar. Right now it's all, or just show me the unread messages, but I can also sort by date, by name, by subject, by whatever is in that menu. You have your folder pane. In your folder pane, you're going to see, in this case, all of your email folders because we're in the mail workspace. If you were in calendar, you might see something different because you don't put your appointments in folders. Same thing with people. It's organized a little bit differently, but that really is the key. So it's a folder pane, but it's really an organizational pane. So this might list groups of people, or it might list all the calendars that you have access to. It will change for your navigation purpose. And as we talk about changing into the mail workspace, or the calendar workspace, or the people in contacts workspace, I just want you to notice that we're doing this right down here on the navigation bar. We have the navigation bar that allows you to change from one workspace to the other, from mail to calendar to people, which is really your contacts, and your tasks. We have a status bar, which will tell you some very good information, and it'll also allow you to change the zoom on your screen. We also have the to-do bar. What I like best about the to-do bar is it's customizable. You can choose not to use it at all, or you can choose that you want your contacts but not your task list. You can decide you want your mini calendar preview but nothing else. So really what goes into that to-do bar is up to you and you have a chance to modify that. If you look at the ribbon, the ribbon is actually broken down by tabs. You have the home tab which will show you all of your common shortcuts. You'll also have tabs like send and receive, folder or view, which again change all of the choices of buttons in front of you. And they're organized really by category, or what I like to call by actions. So within each tab, we have command groups, like this is the group called move, or this is the group called delete. So within each group, you'll have a subset of tools to help you shortcut. Now, we also have a dialog box launcher. And I'm erasing the ink on a slide, because in one line, I wrote through it, and you'll never see it. It's that little notch. If you see that notch, it means when you click on it, you're going to get a dialog box with all of the choices that are possible, but not necessarily displayed in this view. We also have the backstage view. The backstage view takes your email, your contacts, your calendar, all of that information completely out of view because you're going to look at Outlook as a whole. It's more about setting up your email account or setting up an automatic reply because you're out of the office. We call it backstage because it really is like going behind the stage, behind the curtain, to see how things are really set up. This is where you're going to go again to set up your account. Notice we have cleanup tools. We can go ahead and export out our email to a file or import email from a different source. So really it allows us to kind of go behind the scenes and get Outlook to work for us. If you have an email open on the screen, there's also a backstage view for that email. So you'll see here, when I go to the email and I hit file, it no longer talks about account options. It talks about options for this email. Let's set permissions for it. Let's move it to a folder. Can I take a look at the delivery report? Sometimes we want to recall a message. Oops, I didn't mean to send that. Take it out of their mailbox if they haven't read it already. And of course, properties of the email itself. So again, it goes behind the scenes of the email message and allows you to look at it from a whole different perspective. When you click on a mail workspace, that just means we've clicked on mail and the screen is set up however it is we need to set it up. 
again, what I like about Outlook is we have a lot of options that we can choose. And some of these options I turn on and off as I need them. Sometimes I will put preview to the right to read a message preview. So if you click on the message here, you'll see it here. Most of the time I have it at the bottom of the screen. It depends on what I'm trying to preview in the message. So when we have a workspace like this, always pay attention to the view tab because in the view tab, I can change how I want to see those email messages. Do I want them by conversation? Do I want to change to a totally different view? What about my to-do bar? You'll see there is no to-do bar here, so I might want to put it up on the screen. So every time you change a workspace, as you get to know the program, visit this tab and set it up until you're happy with a look in the field. Red messages by default are bold and unread messages are not. So you're going to see that we have some of these changes, but it really does depend on how we've set up our, our view. Remember, we've got a view tab. So if we're in one particular view, unread messages are bold, the rest of them are not bold. This happens to be in the mail workspace viewing all. And I just want to point out to you that we have now blue lines. So the subject is in blue and we have the vertical bar. That's going to tell you that they're unread messages as well. So visually, they're all standing out for you to notice and you can start tackling all your new leisure time reading. If you click on calendar, it moves you to your calendar workspace. I just want to point out to you that notice here your home tab changes. Every time we change a workspace, it'll change to give you the tools specific to that workspace. So in this case, we're right here in calendar and I get to change the view, give me full day view or my work week view. I might want to email my calendar. I might want to set permissions for someone to see my calendar in a work environment. So regardless of how you want to set it up, all of your options are there as long as you're in the right workspace. Notice even with this version of Outlook, we even have a little weather application, which is fantastic. That makes me happy because as a system administrator, um, people always download these weather tools and they put so much spyware into machine. I'm very happy with seeing that because it is from a trusted source. Under people, this is where we see our contacts and our contacts groups. Now it has always been called contacts up to this point and we still refer to them verbally as contacts. Microsoft has decided our new hip way of uh, displaying contacts is people. So understand they are in fact the same thing. So when you click on people, you're going to see all of your contacts. But if you create any distribution groups, let's say team, and you put people in it, then you can actually email them all at the same time just by emailing team. So a little bit more on that later. Really, it's just to show that in this view, that's how you manage them. Their details appear over here to the right. And once again, that home tab has changed and it's changed so that you can be very specific to the people workspace that you're in. And notice you can forward contacts, shared contacts. You can schedule a meeting with one of your contacts. So there's all sorts of good stuff that lands in there for you. There are some other terrific Outlook tools. One of my favorites is the task list. Now I use this all the time and I have tasks on my to-do pane so I don't forget about things. But what I like is tasks also synchronized to my iPhone, so when I go there to my to-do lists, I can see all my tasks. We also have sticky notes. Our sticky notes is, as long as you're in this context, you can put little sticky notes with whatever information you want right here on the screen. So it's a place to put stuff that, well, you don't know where else to put it. And we also have something called a journal. What I like about a journal is if you want to journalize when certain things happen, when you've had meetings, when something was done, you can actually create your own timeline here by creating journal entries. And I can see that today I had one meeting and three phone calls by adding each one of them into the journal so that I can refer back to this a little bit later. I have two favorite features in this version of Outlook and this is one of them. I would get an email in previous versions that says, I would like to have a meeting with you Friday. Are you available? In the old version of Outlook, I would have to fully open up calendar, which means the mail workspace isn't in front of me, or I'd open it up in a new window. 
Now what I can do is I can click and do what's called peaks. So I can go to the calendar. This will pop up. I can click on a day and notice here I have nothing scheduled today. So you can peek at something without having to get completely out of the mail workspace, take a look at the information, and then go all the way back. There's no more back and forth. If someone is looking for information or if I just want to quickly call Sylvia, geez, you know, I'm just going to give her a call, I can peek at people. It'll pop up. I can type in Sylvia. It'll give me her full contact record so I can dial her number. So that actually is a very helpful feature.